Many things have been said about how to play Dark Souls, or what to do to not break your controls while doing it, most of which you've probably heard, like, your starting class doesn't matter, pick or don't pick the master key, parrying is OP, or resistance sucks. What I hope to deliver in this video are techniques which, even after almost a decade since release, many people still ask or don't know about, and which might save yours or your controller's health bar from dropping to zero. Everyone has felt the frustration from Miyazaki's mastermind in putting several important actions on the same button and the cluster this can sometimes cause. Though you may rebind the jump button in latter games, the first DS denies you of such option and thus you will often end up sprinting around and when needing that so very important role, this happens instead. Fortunately, there is a very quick fix for this, which sometimes goes under the radar, block while you are sprinting and you won't get a jump, but a roll instead. If you're not a fan of using the shield, you don't have to. Each time you are sprinting, opt to two-hand your weapon and use that to block. This allows you to maintain higher mobility, whether while running around the vast world of Lordran or while fighting one of its 26 bosses. The second tip goes hand in hand with the first one. Performing running attacks while blocking can be tricky without proper understanding of how they work. There is a 12 frame window between when you start holding the sprint button and being able to perform a running attack. Pressing R1 before this windup is complete will result in a normal attack instead. If you are already sprinting and you block or unblock, the ability to perform a running attack gets reset and this time window needs to elapse again. This means that if you are sprinting and blocking, perhaps because of the first tip in this video, in order to get a running attack, don't stop blocking and press R1. You can, however, abuse this mechanic to also get a quick R1 attack out of a sprint by simply stopping the block right before it, or tapping block and then pressing R1. The platforming mechanics of Dark Souls sure don't reach insane levels of complexity. That being said, sometimes using a jump to bridge over a gap can be quite necessary. If your jump doesn't take you long enough to stagger you, this automatic jump roll animation will occur. It seems harmless at first, but in unfortunate circumstances, it might bring your parkour extravaganza to a bitter end. In Dark Souls 3, for example, this can be prevented by simply letting go of forward after the jump. Dark Souls 1 doesn't have this mechanic. Instead, in order to combat this, you need to do a plunge attack while midair. This will halt your momentum upon landing, allowing you to stay safe on the platform without your character rolling off. Here is a practical demonstration of the trick in the 100% category speedrun. If the safety of your shield is the preferred choice over mobility, one thing you might consider is not blocking constantly, but rather reacting to attacks. The AI of a large number of enemies is programmed to go for different attacks while you are blocking, such as Gwyn using his kick, which you'll never see unless you hold block or enemies with shields, using shield bash to break through your defenses, which results in you being stunned and your stamina being depleted, severely limiting your ability to do anything, really. Your stamina regenerates at a turtle space whenever you're blocking, so try not to hide behind the L1 button all the time. The final tip is a big one, as most people play Souls games on controllers and has to do with how you control it, or rather how you hold your controller in particular. Ever wondered how people sprint around or roll around and are still able to perfectly handle their camera positioning? In order to achieve this with the original bindings, you want to use something called the claw grip, which has many variants, but the most common one looks something like this. Now the chances are you have used the claw grip before, but only temporarily, to press something while you need it to hold the analog stick. Dark Souls, however, requires you to use it almost permanently while moving around in order to maximize your mobility, freedom and control over your character. It might take a while for your hand to get used to this grip, however, the benefits are well worth it as it allows you to react to enemy attacks with a roll much quicker than ever before. And that's a wrap! Hopefully some of these tips will help you on your Dark Souls journey, whether you are a beginner or a seasoned veteran. 
I have some more things like these to share with you guys, so let me know if you'd like to see a similar video in the future, or perhaps throw in some tips I should include. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.